if um, if we look at the planet as if uh, it were a patient, uh, we can see that our activities have been damaging her immune system, and she has been struggling to function and thrive due to the strain we have put on her vital organs. To treat her, we need to restore balance and put nature <clears throat> back at the center of the circle. And to achieve this, we must act for health and well-being, understand nature's patterns and cycles, recognize the value of diversity, unity, and the interdependence of all living things, consider the importance of innovation and adaptation, and invest uh, in nature-based solutions to help stimulate a, a more circular bioeconomy that gives back to nature as much as we take from her. Now, I can only hope that as this current crisis passes, we are able to reflect on and shape the type, type of world we want for ourselves and for future generations. The 75 years after the Second World War saw unprecedented growth, rising longevity and poverty reductions. But all this put an overwhelming strain on our environment. The good news is that we have many of the solutions to hand. Renewable energy is now cheaper than fossil fuels. Uh, agriculture and land use can be more resilient, healthy and productive if we do not degrade our land, destroy our forests and poison our water. Unfortunately, uh, we so often forget that we are profoundly dependent on nature for our lives and livelihood. So how do we balance the need to rebuild economic prosperity, the need to get people back to work against environmental concerns? Investing sustainably now can be a fast, efficient and attractive way to reboot our economy. Therefore, what should be the principles that underlie the reshaping of a new and better global economic system? To seize this a window of opportunity, I believe we need to do five things. First of all, to create momentum for the Great Reset, we need to capture the imagination and will of humanity. We will only change if we really want to change. Secondly, the global economic recovery must set us on a new trajectory of sustainable employment, of livelihoods and economic growth. To achieve scale, we must not be afraid to reorientate our long-standing incentive structures which have been having such perverse effects on our planetary environment and on nature herself if we are to reap the benefits afforded by a more sustainable world thirdly we must redesign systems and pathways to advance net zero transitions globally and in this regard carbon pricing can form a critical pathway to genuinely sustainable markets this reset moment is our opportunity to accelerate and align our efforts to create truly global momentum. Countries, industries, and businesses moving together can create efficiencies and economies of scale that will allow us to leapfrog our collective progress and accelerate our transition. Fourthly, we must reinvigorate science, technology, and innovation this crisis has shown the importance of investing in science, technology, innovation. We are on the verge of catalytic breakthroughs that will alter our view of what is possible and profitable within the framework of a sustainable future. And fifthly, we must rebalance investment. Accelerating sustainable investment could offer significant economic growth and employment opportunities, including in green energy, the regeneration of nature, and landscapes, circular bioeconomy, ecotourism, and green public infrastructure. It is time, therefore, to align sustainable solutions with funding in a way that can transform the marketplace. This would be the most dramatic act of responsible leadership ever seen by the global private sector and would at once provide a catalytic incentive for the public sector to follow. We have a golden opportunity to seize something good from this crisis. Its unprecedented shockwaves may well 
make people more receptive to big visions of change and global crises like pandemics and climate change know no borders and highlight just how interdependent we are as one people sharing one planet. From the uh, perspective of the IMF, uh, what we see is uh, inevitably a very massive injection of fiscal stimulus to help countries deal with this crisis and shift gear for growth to return. But it is paramount that this growth leads to a greener, smarter, and more fairer world in the future. And it is possible to do that, provided that we concentrate on the um, key elements of a recovery now. We don't wait for the, for the days to come. Uh, for the fund, what we see uh, are tremendous opportunities. Let me first talk about the, a green, green growth in the future. Uh, we can put in place public investments and incentives for private investments into low carbon and climate resilient growth. Not only that, but many of these investments can lead to job rich recovery. Think of mangroves restoration, reforestation, or building insulation. And think of the key sectors for reducing uh, climate uh, uh, intensity uh, where both the public and private sector can uh, invest. Uh, I'm particularly keen to take advantage of the low oil prices today to eliminate harmful subsidies and to bring in place carbon price as an incentive for the uh, investments uh, for the future. Uh, secondly, we know the digital economy is the big winner of this crisis. But if we allow it to drive further division in our world, in other words, countries and communities to fall further behind, then it is going to bring uh, uh, more pain than gain for the future. So it is critical, and we do, we at the fund uh, work with others to use investments that are going to be supported by institutions like mine, by the World Bank and others, to shrink the digital uh, divide uh, and also we need to think of how we are going to use the uh, benefits of rapid growth in digital where profitability is jumping up to build more of a sharing of these benefits across our societies. Uh, and that takes me to my third and, and I think most important point of a fairer world. Uh, we know that this pandemic uh, uh, is, uh, if left on its own devices, is going to deepen inequality. That has happened in prior cases of pandemic. But if we were to concentrate on investing in people, in the social fabric of our societies, in access to opportunities, to education, uh, to all, uh, in the uh, expansion of social uh, programs, so we take care of the most vulnerable people, then we can have a world that is a better world for all.